إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والند والنظير وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الذي ليس في جوفه شيء من القرآن كالبيت الخرب أما بعد My dear brothers in Islam In our lives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We know this for a fact puts us through various tests and those of us who assume that life is going to be all roses is going to be without trial without tribulation then we are fooling ourselves the reality of the matter is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see which from amongst us are those who are truthful and which from amongst us have lied when we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, the reality of the matter is that we will be tested. This call of ours, this statement of ours, Allah subhanahu wa taala will test us by it. Allah subhanahu wa taala will test us. Every single person in this room, perhaps, has gone through trials and tribulations that have shaken them that have shaken them to their core and the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us who put us into this world has also given us various mechanisms coping mechanisms for us to get through life and the reality of the matter is sometimes you find yourself in a situation in life where you do not know how you got into that situation and you do not know what you are going to do with that situation. You do not know what's going to happen. You literally don't know what to do. And perhaps all of us have been in situations like this. The reality is this is where At-Tawakkul comes in, in every single one of our lives. Very commonly, when we speak about Tawakkul as a concept, it's commonly mentioned as Al-I'timal ala Allah. Reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very often we mention things when we speak about tawakkul, like the importance of tying your camel, like the importance of preparing. Like for example, we had those people at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who would come from Yemen for hajj. And they would take no preparations for their hajj. No preparations. And they would say, نَحْنُ نَتَوَكَّلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ we are a people, we rely upon Allah for our preparations. And Allah, because of these people, revealed in the Quran, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in the Quran, prepare. When Allah spoke about preparation, this first, وَتَزَوَّدُوا, is speaking about prepare in terms of your dunya. And then Allah mentioned, فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى the best preparation, the best of all preparations is at taqwa Being a person who is conscious of Allah, that is for sure the best preparation. So this concept 
of tawakkul that we commonly hear about, it's normally prepared. Don't forget, there's two aspects of tawakkul. The first one, you take, you take your means, you tie your camel, and thereafter you have tawakkul in Allah. However, there is another aspect of tawakkul which many of us, we forget about. And it becomes sidelined for us. And that is true reliance of your heart upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of the affairs in your life. The things that happen to you in your life. The masaib, the afflictions that afflict you in your life. The reality of the matter is every single one of us without tawakkul we are doomed. We are a people who are walking around by ourselves with no connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This reliance of Allah that I am speaking about is the kind of reliance that Musa alayhi salam had in the Quran. Musa alayhi salam, he was given prophethood along with his brother Harun alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told both of them to go to Fir'aun. Allah gave them a mighty task. Go to Fir'aun and call him and his people to, to a tawheed And this was heavy for Musa alayhi salam. The fear, what Musa alayhi salam felt, Allah expresses it in the Quran. When Musa alayhi salam had been discussing with Fir'aun and he could see the tightness or the difficulty of his affair and his affair was affecting him, what did he say? What did he say? He said, You people, you will remember what I am saying to you. And then what did he say right after that? amri And I leave my affair, this affair of mine, I leave it up to Allah. And then what did he say after that? Further emphasizing the point of today's khutbah. Inna Allah basirun bil ibad. Allahu Akbar. What did he say? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basirun bil ibad. Allah can see his slaves. Allah sees the situation of his slaves. What does Allah reveal right after that? What does Allah say right after that? فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَهُ So Allah protected him from the evil of what they had brought him. After Musa alayhi salam had placed his reliance upon Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the evil of what they had plotted against him. So there's this reliance of Allah. When you find yourself in a difficult situation in your life, you must always remember that it is Allah who is the one who has set out all of these affairs for you. Everything that you are going through in your life, it is Allah who is Ar Rafiq. And he mentioned, Inna Allah Rafiqun, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inna Allah Rafiqun, Yuhibbul Rifq. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is Rafiq, He is gentle. And He loves gentleness in every single affair. Every single affair, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He loves gentleness in that. So the reality is there are subtleties. Allah is Allah Latif. There are subtleties in your life. There are things that you are going through in your life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Wadud, who is the loving, He has placed, who is Al-Hakim, He is the most wise, Al-Alim, the most knowledgeable. He has placed all of these things in your life, the things that you are going through in your life, these trials and tribulations, you may not understand why you are going through something right now. But perhaps one day will come and you will thank Allah that you went through those things. And we have all seen these things in our lives. We have gone through this. We have experienced this in our lives. So it is incumbent upon every single one of us, my dear brothers, that with the trials and the tribulations that we are going through, we, in our hearts, have an i'timadu ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reliance upon Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has decreed all of this for us, what we are going through. And there is hikmah in His decree. There is wisdom in His decree. There is wisdom in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refusing for me to get that job. There is wisdom in me losing my job. There is wisdom in me getting divorced. There is wisdom in me getting remarried. 
there is wisdom in all of these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for me in my life. There is hikmah in all of these things. And all of these things, they are best for me. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب واستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم